Hello and welcome. You are watching Big Picture with me, Vishal Dahiya, and today we're going to talk about the issue of climate change. It becomes really, really important uh, given the fact that uh, United Nations Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, that is IPCC, in its most unequivocal report has uh, clearly pointed out that uh, there will be at least 1.5 degree centigrade rise in the global temperatures in all scenarios. In fact, the United Nations has termed it as code red for humanity when we're talking about the issue of climate change. We'll try and understand what does this report say? Why is this such a, a you know, important uh, issue? And also, why are we in such a dire situation right now? Also, we need to understand what can be done from here onwards. There are a lot of suggestions which have been coming about. Uh, there's been a lot of talk internationally which has been uh, done by the global leadership as well as activists as well about what needs to be done. We'll try and understand all those aspects. And for more on this, uh, we're joined by two distinguished experts. Let me first introduce them to you. Beginning with, we have with us uh, Professor C.K. Vashne, environmentalist and former dean of the School of Environmental Sciences in JNU. We're also joined by Urmi Goswami, assistant editor of Economic Times. She looks after uh, the, uh, these issues, uh, uh, understands them much better. Let me start with you only, Urmi, and let's start by giving our viewers uh, the key highlights, the key points, uh, main issues which are flagged in IPCC's report, which we are referring to right now. So this is the sixth assessment report, and this is the first uh, uh, element of it, which is on the physical basis of the science. So it talks about whether human beings are responsible for how much the human beings are responsible for climate change, how much warming has happened, and uh, what kind of sea level rise we are going to see. So it talks about the physical basis. Mm -hmm. What this report tells us very clearly for the first time, this is sixth assessment, this is the first time it says very clearly that human beings are responsible for most of the climate change that impacts that we see today. The warming that we see today is human induced. And the second uh, big uh, message from the uh, report is this, is that many of these changes are irreversible, like the melting of ice, uh, sea ocean warming, uh, sea level rise, these are irreversible. The third big message is that Climate change impacts are now evident in almost all regions. So it's happening everywhere. And this summer we saw um, that, and we are continuing to see the impacts of climate change across the world. So there is no region that is uh, immune to the impacts of climate change. Mm -hmm. The fourth message is the warming, how much warming has happened. And it, it has now, because the science has improved, there's greater accuracy. So it turns out that we are already at almost 1.1 degrees above the pre-industrial uh, temperature uh, limit. So that is from the late 19th century. If you take the temperature then and compare it to the temperature now, there's been an increase of 1.1. Okay. The, and then comes the, the next part of the story is about 1.5. The science tells us now very clearly that unless we act quickly, uh, there is no way that we can actually reach that mark, uh, you know, in the next 20 years, which is the time limit we have. Mm -hmm. So basically, we are going to hit 1.5 degrees increase in temperature. We had 1.1 and 1.5 will be reached in the next 20 years. And to achieve that, it, but all is not lost. So it's really dire, but all is not lost. We still can reach that uh, magic figure of 1.5. But for that, we have to do drastic reduction of greenhouse gas emissions. Okay. And that means starting literally today. Okay, okay. We'll, we'll come to that part a bit later in the discussion as to how uh, it can be done and what more needs to be done, uh, you know, uh, on the part of all stakeholders involved here. Let me bring in uh, Professor uh, Vashne here as well. Professor Vashne, uh, Udbi has uh, pointed out the key highlights. Uh, do you agree with uh, what the United Nations assessment uh, with, with this report is, uh, in, in, in simple terms, it says, uh, code red for humanity, and as Urmi was saying, it's us who are responsible for it. I think the report is based upon science. And this is very clearly 
visible to us so what they are predicting is also experience world over different regions have experienced different way of the impact for example the coastal areas get flooded there are fires and forest fires which are unprecedented and taking it heavy toll on the forests which are the repositories of carbon and also we must understand that the capacity to absorb and sequester carbon is also decreasing both on the land as well as in the sea and the temperatures are increasing the night temperature average and the day temperature average lowest minimum is really shooting up and we have already seen in the northern plains of india as well as middle east as well as in the pacific uh, west pacific that we have seen temperatures which are absolutely unprecedented and every year it is really breaking the previous year's record not only this every decade is really shooting above the previous decade so i think these are some of the things which are very serious the polar ice caps are melting as well as our glaciers are melting and everywhere actually because of the global warming the hydrological cycle has been totally shaken and twisted in many many different ways and consequently we are seeing that the himalayan as well as the hilly areas are suffering from incessant rain as well as the plains are suffering from incessant rain and floods which they have not seen for past many many decades so i think these are the things which are affecting human life as well as the progress as well as the various kinds of other socio economic problems of enormous complexity which arises mm -hmm. everywhere we see that we have got now the rescue team moving from one place to another and in fact it has become a all the 12 months affair where they are engaged so i think these are the kind of things which really become very serious roadblock in our economic progress as well as in achieving the targets of the sustainable development goals okay. and here is a problem that not only that the carbon emission is increasing it is also going to increase further so i think here is a problem although that many countries are trying their best to say zero sum or zero carbon or zero net net zero but i think this net zero concept has also to be understood what does it mean mm -hmm. net zero means that the what you are emitting in the same amount you are really sequestering first of all it is a very ambitious objective how far this will be achieved in practice is to be seen how this is going to be verified is to be seen but more than that this is not going to solve the problem as we can see from the report okay. because ultimately it is the cumulative carbon dioxide and the cumulative pressure of these warming gases which is really matter going to matter and as a result we will find that extreme climate events are going to grow as well as going to intensify both in terms of their geographical area as well as in terms of their duration and also in terms of their occurrence because they are going to occur for a longer period of time in much earlier mm -hmm. and this we have seen everywhere around the globe okay sea levels are going to rise which is also creating a great threat to the coastal cities in india Indeed. as well as in other places so i think here is a situation where the coastline is going to shrink people are going to migrate so we are going to get a sort of climate induced migrations which are going to be instant and are going to be create major problem that we have to see okay. the corona crisis as well as we do not know what other pandemics or other uh, calamities are going to come okay. and here is a very important task so i think all these things make the whole thing such where the international community has to really think very carefully and it is not a question of a Uh, urgency i will say it is a question of in emergency and absolutely we have to really move at a speed which perhaps we have never thought before okay. and much faster okay thank you okay okay so so what you're pointing out uh, professor vashne clearly uh, you know uh, justifies uh, 
that uh, term which has been uh, given by the United Nations there with this report saying code red for humanity. But uh, let me bring in Urmi here as well. Urmi, when we're talking about these effects, you know, global effects as well, if we have to focus specifically on India, uh, it says, the report says that uh, India may also see more heat waves, droughts and cyclones as well. So that clearly shows that uh, it's, it's, it's about, uh, as, as has been emphasized time and again, it's a global phenomena and no country can escape uh, the effects of climate change. Well, uh, that is one thing that the report points out very clearly, that not only can no country escape it, there, what the scientists have found after the review is that no country is escaping. So everybody is facing the impacts of climate change. Uh, it is it is now, it is something that's happening now and it's happening everywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, in India, you mentioned India and, and the kind of issues that we will face in India. Uh, one, of course, you, is the coastline and that's because the Indian Ocean uh, warms much more rapidly than the other oceans. And 50% of uh, sea, because of, uh, because of the heat, there is something that what happens is thermal expansion. So the sea sort of, Sea level, sea level rise, 50% is because of thermal expansion. And because the Indian Ocean warms faster than the other oceans of the world, so therefore we will experience, uh, in the Indian Ocean region, in India, we will experience sea level rise uh, a little a little much, a little more than, and maybe faster than the others. And that basically endangers our people, uh, our cities along the coast, people who live there, their livelihoods. It's also about uh, how... Simi it similar threats in the Himalayan region uh, as well. Quality. Similar threats in the Himalayan Sorry? region as well. I'm saying similar threats yes, in the Himalayan region as well. Of course, there are threats in the Himalayan region as well. But, uh, I mean, the reason why I mentioned the oceans is also because of cyclones. We have already seen, in the last two years, we have seen three cyclones. We'll see many more of these. We'll also see uh, prolonged periods of drought, and we'll also see flooding and that is because of the warming and and it, and the way uh, the because of the impact on the water cycle uh, which basically changes the way a uh, rainfall pattern will happen so the amount of rainfall that we'll get in india will not change at least in the next 30, 20 to 30 years so if the amount of rainfall that you get every year you're going to get the same amount but what's going to change so the mean annual rainfall will not change mm -hmm. but what will change is the variability within so where and how much so you'll see days when there is intense rainfall so that will lead to flooding think about it uh, like this one degree of rainfall act contribute one degree of warming contributes to seven percent rise in uh, uh, rainfall so Imagine if there is greater amount of warming, how much water we are talking about and how much flooding will have. So that's a big problem. And because the, uh, the rainfall, the precipitation is concentrated in, in few days, you'll also have prolonged periods of heat, heat waves and drought. Mm -hmm. So extreme temperatures, again, we will have. We've seen this year in northern India and parts of northern India, how the humidity levels were so high with the temperature high, the wet bulb temperature making it difficult for people to work. Now we are going to have many more days like that. Okay. So okay. yes, uh, I mean, there's no region that is that is going to be spared. No region is being spared right now and no region will be spared if we do not start acting now. Okay, okay. Individually we... as countries and collectively as a world. Okay, definitely. We will have to mend our ways out there. Yeah, your views, uh, uh, Professor Vashne, on this, uh, you know, uh, the, the effect on, on India uh, when we are talking about the overall issue of climate change here and what the report also says, points out, as Urmi was also summarizing it, uh, you were also earlier referring to, uh, you know, effects on the coastal areas. Uh, and then uh, let's not forget uh, droughts and uh, heat waves as well. Sure. Let me also just point out that in case that uh, coastal cities are concerned, are going to be affected in mm -hmm. our coastal areas as well as the agriculture in the coastal system is going to be far more seriously affected because of the ingress of the saline water and as well as because this our drinking water sources wells etc will also be become unusable 
So I think the water crisis is going to precipitate in many, many different forms. So here is an issue which we have to be think, thought about. And also we must see that agriculture takes a major share of the water which we provide as irrigation. And now because of the heat, the crops will require more water and more water will be transpired. So I think here is another problem, which means that increasingly there are pockets where there is an acute shortage of water during summer at least, but at the same time, our water requirement is going to grow because of the heat load that we are going to get. We must also remember that it is not a question of human beings. It is also a question of our animal husbandry, particularly cow and other mammals on which our dairy industry depends. The maximum temperature that can be tolerated is about 47 degrees centigrade by the mammals mm -hmm. as a whole. And therefore, we have already seen spells of temperature which is 51. And the wet well thermometer actually reading is very, very significant. And on these temperatures, the workers in the industries cannot really give their output as much as they can in the normal circumstances. So I think the industrial percussion is going to be affected. The agriculture work is going to be affected because in this intense heat, farmers cannot work. And therefore they have to be really have a different kind of a schedule to which they are not used to now. Okay. At the same time, what we have seen, what we have seen and which was not anticipated very clearly is the lightning that we are really seeing and the number of deaths that are happening. Mm -hmm. Thousands of lightning are taking place and their number has increased many fold and it is going to increase even further as the cloud as well as condensation nuclei are going to really create some kind of a kinetic uh, okay. rubbing which is going to create the electric charges and so on. Okay. So I think we, in, we have seen in India a very large number of people have been killed because of this and their number is increasing over the years. So I think these are the new threats which were not visibly seen 10 years ago, let's say when 1.5 degree report was published. And now we see that we have to revise this and we see that the temperature rise is much faster than what we have seen. Okay. An added factor, let me also add, the forest fire are adding another major complication Indeed. in this entire modeling that we have done and these factors how they are going to play out and what kind of magnification of these fires is going to take place in the coming years because of the intensive heating it is something which we have to really imagine and see so thus the sequestration is going to go down both in ocean as well as on the land because of the warming of the surface water which does not permit optimum photosynthesis to take place by the photo Plankton. Okay. Okay. Let's now let's now take a look at uh, you know what needs to be done. Uh, both of you have uh, clearly pointed out uh, the scenario, made us understand what the report is trying to say as well. What is the situation right now? And Urmi, in your previous response, you were referring to that time to act is now, or rather, time to act was yesterday. Yes, it is uh, exactly that because as I pointed out right in the beginning that. Even if we reach net zero by 2050 as a globe, as a world, we will still have crossed 1.5. We would have reached about 1.6 degree level of warming. But the, because we would have reached net, reached net zero, there's a possibility of, of the temperature rise being recovered. So you can overshoot the 1.5 and then get back under it. So that is why we, it is imperative that the world as a whole reaches net zero by 2050. If we do not want to re uh, cross the threshold of 1.5, then we have to achieve net zero by 2040 as a globe. Now, what will that require? That will require every country to stretch itself and to find a way to grow their economy or undertake their economic activities without adding emissions. Because one of the things we must remember that the climate impacts we are experiencing today is because of the emissions that have happened till date. Beyond that, every, em every emission that we'll do in the future will add to future warming. Mm -hmm. So if we want to avoid future warming, then we have to ensure we cut the emissions. Also remember that there are many, many changes, as I said right in the beginning, those are irreversible. 
at least for centuries or a millennia. Okay. There will be some which will be able to slow down. And what if we actually cut emissions, it will mean that we will be able to slow down or prevent them from worsening. So what does it mean exactly for countries? It will mean that every country has to step up climate action, take measures to reduce emissions, take measures to adapt. It will also mean that in, in the globe, as, as a globe, developed countries, who have, many of whom have already started taking action, need to go back and revise their actions because it cannot be that because many of those uh, plans are front low uh, are not front loaded so the mm -hmm. the major part of the action is after 2030 because those were based on it on a different kind of calculations the calculations today show us that this decade 20 2020 decade is critical and the 2030 to 40 decade is also important so okay. the bulk of the efforts have to be made in this decade as for and most importantly there is a need to address the issue of support for developing countries so that developing countries too can actually step up their action. Okay. It is actually a time for solidarity and for action. Okay, time for all stakeholders to come together there to act quickly and act now. Professor Vashne, your concluding comments there, sir, on what needs to be done and also to understand more clearly whatever we are doing right now because the issue of climate change has been discussed, debated uh, and, uh, you know, are uh, being talked about a lot in the past uh, two decades or so. But uh, whatever we are doing as a world, as a, uh, you know, community, is that enough? I think anything that we are doing is fine, but I think all this has to be stepped up many folds. Mm -hmm. But there are certain problems which also need to be aware of. For example, resurgent nationalism, as well as fractured international understanding. These are the, some of the things which are going to be something on which we have to really work okay. so that everyone both vertically and horizontally, are aligned and are committed to one cause. Also, we must understand that the top bureaucracy and the decision-making body, from that downward to the village level and village community and village panchayat, all must have to work together in unison, in a seamless manner, on one objective of really finding out the issues as well as activities which contribute to the global warming, be our living style, be our food and cons consumption pattern, everything has to be taken into account. Otherwise, we are going to really miss the target. The window opportunity is fast closing and humanity has been pushed to the precipice. And it is very likely that unless we really work in this way mm -hmm. and at the fastest possible pace, it is very likely that we will come to such a critical stage that we might have to really see below with no rescue okay. because of this kind of a pressure that we are. As we are delaying action, the speed as well as the quantum of work that we have to do to achieve the required 1.5 or even within the two degree limit becomes critical every day that we delay. Okay. And it has a great economic cost also, okay. as well as I should say, the social repercussions. Indeed, uh, there are a lot of repercussions out there and a lot of costs uh, attached to that as well. Thank you so much, uh, Professor Vashne, as well as Urmi for sharing your views and inputs as our experts were pointing out uh, these are the key highlights, key important issues, uh, serious issues with, with uh, the effects of climate change, which have been highlighted by the report, uh, the United Nations report. And as our experts uh, underscored once again, that time is of essence. All of us will have to work together. All stakeholders will have to come together, work unitedly on this front uh, to avert all the threats which we face uh, due to climate change. We'll come back again with a different topic. Till then, keep watching. Thank you.